You What's do happening? look great, though. It's hey, true. so do you. Nice shirt. Oh, no, I'm I'm real hairy right now, but yeah, I'm rocking Me the Powerline shirt. I actually, I was just in the back. I was like, should I shave? Nah. I've been trying to hold off shaving yeah. until I can cut, because I feel like if I shave my face that, like, this is too, like, I've got my hair, like, pushed back with so much product right now because it gets so big. <laughs> yeah, it's, same, same. It's I the my, worst, my partner man. cut my hair for me the last, last couple of times, and uh, it, it, it's, it's been working out. I've been fighting that. Like, my girlfriend wants to cut my hair really bad. Do it. And I haven't let her yet. I've, what I've are you afraid of? Her. She's gonna miss. Yeah. She's gonna sculpt. Yeah, I'm. I am afraid of that actually. <laughs> um, for everybody joining in, if you don't know, this is Jason Marsden. He was Max on a Goofy movie. He was uh, Binks on Hocus Pocus. You've talked to like right. a ton of people uh, for like the DC shows, right? Yes. Yeah. And you were on like all the TGIF shows back in the day, basically. All of them. All. Of I them. did all of them. Full House, Step by yes. Step. You probably yeah, on Family Matters at some point. I work. I was. I work next door to them, so that's close enough. Speaking speaking of working next door, so we have a mutual friend in Dusty Slay. Yeah, and man. I watched. I watched you talk to him last night. Uh, I got. I actually got to take a little bit of. Uh, I took a little offense that you claim that you've discovered him, because <laughs> when because when Dusty moved to Nashville, I started uh -huh. taking him on the road with me. So we yeah. did shows together for like two years, and uh, so I like to take claim that I discovered Dusty. We could both share that that credit. You huh? know what? All right. All right. I, I'm, I, I mean, like, I, I think it's great cred to be like, oh, yeah, I, I, I discovered D Dusty Slay. I took him on the road with me. Yeah, I put him on a TV show. We have we have good taste. Yeah, we do. It, it shows our comedic taste for sure. Um, but I love the story that you told. Uh, and I actually think our audience would I don't know if you want to retell that here or not. But I think our audience would love to hear the story about how you snuck onto the Batman Forever set. You got to leave out the part about what Bob Saget but, said to Dave. But Dave Cooley. Cooley. <laughs> I was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah, leave that part okay. out. But the rest of it is aces. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so yeah, we're, we're working on Full House. We're working on the Warner Brothers lot. And I'm like a huge Batman nut. I'll show you my Batman room while I'm talking oh, yeah, about this. Right. Um, all Batman all the time. Here he is over here. I got a Glenn Murakami right here. Oh, sweet. I got a Bruce Tim right here. Oh, there's a Glint, there's a thing. Oh, uh, so, that, is, that is amazing. So I'm a, I'm a huge, let me find a better light. I'm a huge Batman fan. Right. And I found out they were shooting Batman forever on the lot. And, uh, and I will do anything I can to like sneak up on a set anyway, especially a Batman set. And so it was like a Friday we're about ready to do full house for like a studio audience. It's dinner time, so I'm walking around and I and I snuck onto the set and I saw Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones in their full get up, full full makeup in like the lair, doing an exchange and then like laughing. How, how old were you when you did this? I was twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one? Man. Yeah. Yeah. Um and uh I excitedly ran back to the set of Full House because uh, uh, I had, we had to get ready for the show, and, I'm, and I'm, I run into the 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 makeup room. And I'm like, oh my gosh! I just snuck onto the Batman set. I saw Tommy Lee Jones. I saw Jim Carrey dressed as the Riddler, and Bob Saget's like, Jim's here. I'm like, yeah. He's like, where? I said, like stage forty four down the road. He's like, show me. He gets up out of the makeup chair, and insists that I follow him. Now, remind you, I'm reminding you, reminding you, we're doing a show. We don't not we're supposed to leave right. the sound stage. So I take him over to the set. They cut, they wrapped, so they weren't on the soundstage, but, but there was a trailer right there that said Riddler. I'm like, well, I guess we know who that is. And Bob knocks on the door, and Jim Carrey opens the door in his full-on like, Riddler outfit with the mask and the question marks. It was just him and his assistant, and he invites <laughs> us in, and I'm sitting there, and, and I said this to Dusty. I was like, there's, there's times where I feel like I don't belong in my own industry because I'm still so starstruck. I can't like separate yeah. the, the person. Uh, and... And uh, I'm, I'm marveling at their exchange. I'm like, how do they know each other? I didn't realize, I had forgotten that, that Jim Carrey had started in stand-up. I forgot that Bob Saget started in stand-up. And the two of them are just talking, you know, sharing stories. And uh, 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 Bob invited Jim back to the full house. He said, come on by, the kids would love to meet you. And he did, he came over, he brought his daughter. I had him autograph a, uh, a Dumb and Dumber soundtrack that I had. And then, uh, and then years later, by coincidence, I, I booked this this like little part in Fun and Dick and Jane, uh, 
in the convenience store with Jim Carrey, and he uh, and he totally rem remembered me from that. Yeah, he actually seemed like a a, a great dude. I I did the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog junket, and okay. I got to talk to him for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, I made him laugh like twice yeah. in the interview, and now it, that's like career high. For there me. you go. Like, like now, I, nobody will ever be able to tell me I'm not funny again. Because if they try, I'll just be like, "Eh, I made yeah. them laugh." So yeah, nice, nice. But um, but my point is that uh, he just like everybody was so. I was real nervous because you hear all these stories about Jim. You don't know what to expect. Like you mm -hmm. see that that Jim and Andy documentary, yes. right? Oh, yeah. And people yeah. talk about how kind of aloof he is. But he could not have been a sweeter guy. When oh, I totally. Him. He was Where like just the coolest dude. In that, in that, that it was just two nights that I worked on fun with Dick and Jane, and I was, you know, I was again starstruck, scared, didn't know what his process was, and um, and and I'm like, am I gonna get fired? Because I I I cannot hold, I cannot keep a straight face. I'm gonna keep right. laughing no matter what he does. So luckily in the scene, I have to, all I'm doing is burying my head in a book. But he, uh, you know, he works stuff out. He does the the bit, uh, his where he's trying to pull a gun on me, but a gun gets stuck, and he right. he really wanted them to sew his uh, his sleeve into his pocket so he couldn't get it out and he messed around with that for a little bit and um and he was very funny with the the crew and cracking jokes um and the weird thing at the end um uh, where we've wrapped for the day he's like hey you want to come on you want to come and see what we did and he invites me over to video village to watch the the uh the the playback and uh uh uh, people are, are making noise and you know, I mean, they're rapping. We're done for the work, working for the day. But mm -hmm. at one point he's watching and he's like, Get, can you stop it? Can you see how we're working here? And then goes back to the, uh, <laughs> the, the video of village. I'm like, oh, okay. Brilliant display of power. I'm going to go, but I'm go to my car. I'm That's done. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so bringing it back to Batman. I mean, since we're comicbook.com, I'll just go ahead and ask. I mean, yes. Since you were on the, uh, set for Batman Forever. Who's your favorite Batman? Who you got? Who's the all-time Michael guy? Keaton. Keaton's my Batman. Right, that, 100%. That's, that's what did it for me. 1989, I got invited to the, the premiere because I, I, Zach, I had a show and I had a publicist and I think I begged her. I was like, please. I was really interested in... I remember like... Remember newsstands? Remember you can go to like a newsstand and, and, and leaf through magazines and it was, I think it was like Comic Scene or some magazine like that where they'd show like sneak peeks of the of the the costume, yeah. And when I first saw him in the all black costume and, and the the striking yellow symbol and just I'm like, first off, is that Michael Keaton? Number one, number two, it looks badass. And I think they showed a little bit of the 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 car as well, the Batmobile. I was hooked, obsessed. And then I saw the movie, and then uh, uh, it was over. I saw it like three times in the theater, and then it was the first time that movie was released on VHS within like six months, or maybe even a little shorter than that, because usually like from theater to home video was like years. Came out yeah. six months later and I wore that tape out. I loved it. Oh man. Yeah, Batman was actually the first movie that I saw in, in movie theater. So uh, nice. Michael Keaton's my Batman too. He, right on. He, yeah, I, I say Christian Bale, I think did a better Bruce Wayne, but sure. Michael Keaton is Batman. Yeah. Um, full disclosure, I think a Goofy movie is like the most underrated Disney cartoon of all time. It's the only movie that's ever made me cry. That's a true story. <laughs> that's a true story. Like when when Leo gets dropped in the ocean in Titanic, I don't feel anything. He dies in Forrest Gump, nothing. But when when Max is being a dick to Goofy, uh -huh. just waterworks, man. I'm like, <laughs> stop being so mean to Goofy. He loves you. That's why it made you cry. That's so funny. Yeah, that's the spot. I don't know why. I'm so sensitive to that part. He but, was. He was. So, that always made me sad too. He was so unreasonable, unreasonable to his dad. Yeah, it it it, it frustrated me. But uh, so now that Disney Plus is like bringing back all of this stuff, do you think there's any chance that we might see like what like get a get a Goofy sequel where we see kind of maybe Goofy as a grandpa and Max as a as a dad doing his own thing? God, I have no idea. I mean, anything's possible nowadays. I mean, I know that the popularity of a Goofy movie has sustained and is growing as all you guys keep getting older and then telling your friends and showing it to your kids. Right. Uh, Bill Farmer, who's the voice of Goofy, my dad, he, uh, that's always been his dream is to do another one where like Goofy's right. a grandpa and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I, yeah. I think that would be a lot of fun. And uh, I don't, that soundtrack too is so good. Like power good soundtrack. Line, yep. power, power line for no reason whatsoever will get stuck in my head for like just 
out of nowhere. Yeah. That, like, like, will just get stuck in my head for days. And I, yeah, can't yeah. Get, and I haven't seen the movie maybe you know, in two years, and it'll just pop up for no yeah. reason. I'm like, all right, well, there it is again. Um, so now we've got um, Disney Plus is working on Hocus Pocus 2, and you are Binks. And I know Binks turned in, back into a boy, but I can't yes. imagine Hocus Pocus 2 without Binks. Sure. So uh, any chance you're going to be popping up in that? I don't know if you can tell us or if the Disney hitman will uh, assassinate you. But Well, I can't tell you anything, but maybe, hold on, maybe someone else can. Hold on. I have not received a phone call. <laughs> Just going to go back to my litter box. Uh, you heard it from the from the cat's mouth. The source itself. <laughs> did, you, did you think you were going to get a puppet show? I did, did you not. you think that was going to happen? No, no, I, I didn't. didn't think it but I'm glad it did. <laughs> I'm glad it did. Um, so uh, also to, uh, yesterday was the uh, we saw the first trailer for the uh, the farewell season of uh, Fuller House. So oh yes. I know you didn't. You didn't come. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm laughing because I, I saw your 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 uh, promo where you're like, I kind of said farewell in 1995. <laughs> I just I just call it like I see it, man. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, you played Nelson, which yes. is one of uh, DJ's original boyfriends. Yes. And uh, I know you didn't return for it. They got Hal Sparks to play the part for Fuller House. So Isn't I'm he great? Curious. Huh? Isn't he? Isn't he one of the best actors you've I, ever? I love Hal Sparks. I've actually done a show with Hal. He's Hal's so funny. He's a great dude. I he really is, like Hal. He's so funny. Yeah. yeah. But but my my question was yes. how come you didn't return for the part? I, I know I know they they contacted you right and you had something else going on. Well, Hal called me because he was destitute and between jobs and he's like, man, can I please have this because I think I look close enough like you. I said, sure, man, anything for you. No, that's not true. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I had an opportunity. I got, it sounds silly. I got invited to Dragon Con in Atlanta, mm -hmm. it, which is a hard invite to get, as I understand it. And, uh, and I jumped at it. I was like, you know, I, I live in Nashville. Uh, you're in Nashville, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a little bit outside Nashville, but I'm close. And I'm surprised we haven't met yet. We have a lot of mutual friends, so it's I don't know how It's such a small town. Person. I know. It's such a small town. Well, now I, I'm sure we'll, we'll bump into each other all the time. Fingers um, crossed. I, I don't know about nowadays. Nowadays, who knows, but... No, it'll be months. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep um, our distance if we do. Yeah, okay, perfect. I know I want to talk, like, stand-up with you, because I know uh, Dusty and all the, the local stand-up scene is um, I'm a big fan of. Oh, we can talk about whatever you want. I mean, we got time. But it, I don't know how much time you got, but I'll talk stand-up all day. I got, as long as there's people up in the corner here watching, I guess we could still talk. Um, perfect. I love how it started, like, 200 people, and then I came on screen, like, no, I thought it was the guy from X-Men. And then, steam <laughs> went down. How often does that happen? Do you? How often do you get mistaken for James Marsden? Uh, I don't get mistaken for, but people call me James all the time. It's like people know who I am, but they're like, uh, they'll introduce me as James or they'll refer to me as James, um, knowing the, the difference. I think there's a definite difference. Like he's, you know, taller, much better looking than me. Uh, but it's the names weird, are it's weird how good looking that guy still is. Like he's handsome. When I, when I mentioned that I did Sonic to, to talk to Jim Carrey, I also yes. talked to James Marsden and yes. meeting him in person. And I was like, God, this guy has not... Like, people give Paul Rudd all the credit for not aging, but, like, James hasn't aged at all. It's, he's maintained I don't know, quite I don't well. Know how much blood he's drinking, but... All of it. All of it. Yes. All the blood of him. Yeah, yeah. when well, you go to, the, to donate blood, a portion of it goes to James Marsden. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I don't yeah. even remember what we were talking about now. Uh, full House, did you want to know the yeah. answer? Yeah, 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 the answer to Full House. Uh, I, I got invited to Dragon Con, and, and I, I was weighing the... Uh, yeah, I'd moved to Nashville, so I would have had to have gone to L.A. It was happening, the Dragon Con was happening the same time as the shooting days for Full ha Fuller House. And, um, and I was like, man, I, I, it seemed like I had to fly out to L.A. on my own dime, which was weird, and... Uh, uh, I, I, I didn't know if I, I would have missed a couple of days of Dragon Con. I really wanted to go and I guess I love dressing up and stuff. I love, I've been to Burning Man. I love that whole play and, and Dragon Con seemed very much like that. So I had like stuff I want to bring with me. It's like, do I have to do I bring all my stuff with me to Los Angeles and then fly with all my stuff to Atlanta? Or I could just stay in Nashville and drive to Atlanta. It'll take me three hours. 
right. and have a much more relaxed experience. So it was, it was a tough experience. I went back and forth with the producers and the casting directors and ultimately I was like, I just, I, for my own peace of mind, I, you know, blessings, thank you, maybe in the future, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose this, this path. Yeah, well, and also you gave Hal some work and he's been needing it, so. You he's know. been needing it. The man yeah. has not worked. The man, you know, he, he, <laughs> he, can't, he can't donate. He looks young too, you know? Yeah, he, does. he looks great. Yes. He still looks great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're pretty much remaking everything these days. I mean, now they've had the Fuller House remake. They've had Girl Meets World. So when are we going to get uh, like a, do you think like we might get a step-by-step -step remake or, 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 or kind of see what those guys are up to? Does anybody want that? I don't know. If they do a step-by-step -step remake, it would probably be like with a completely different well, I could ask like, that, family. If I'm being completely honest, I could ask my, that about a lot of things if, if we really want that. But <laughs> but that's the business world, right? The staff I, sells. I well, it's like what what sort like do you want to like do people want to see step-by-step -step with the original cast, just like Fuller House, um, just to see how we look, see how we've. Uh, We've aged, or would it be interesting to see? Because step by step was pretty much Brady Bunch. You know, it was yeah. the same concept. Um, like two you know, families come come together, blend it, blending the kids. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If people want it, they'll they'll do it. I heard that. Uh, I forget which company got all the rights to uh, the the. Is it was it Fox or Warner Brothers catalog? And step by step was among them, but I, I don't know. Again, my my. My phone hasn't. My phone's not. My phone hasn't rung. No one's calling me. You know, I, I I don't know why you haven't just started doing live streams of you puppeteering as Binks. I think that would be great. <laughs> I do at like three o'clock in the morning when there's no there's no hope. <laughs> Is there anyone up? Hello, drinking with Binks. I'm gonna rate them witches. Yes. Give me all your, give me all your brew and your witchy. Uh, oh, look at that witch. Hey. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. No, I don't, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Are, the, you, you don't want, they don't want the live stream with Binks or they don't want the step-by-step -step remake? Because no, they, they don't want, they don't want to see me making, uh, well, they probably do want to see me making a drunken fool of myself at three o'clock in the morning with a puppet on my hand. I mean, who would want that? I'll join in with Hold that. on, light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you do a lot of fan conventions. Uh, I'm kind of curious about like where we're at right now with the uh, COVID and the quarantine and all that. I mean, how's that affecting you with uh, all of these things getting canceled right now? It's a uh, it's a shame because uh, I had a very busy year uh, already plotted. I had three that I was going to do this month and uh, came to a screeching halt. It's fine. You know, I want everyone to be safe. Um, uh, I miss the travel at the same time. Like before all this happened, there was a part of me that's like, oh man, I have to get on another plane. You know, it's like we, are, we, we complain for what we, what, we, right. what we don't have until we don't have it. Uh, uh, I miss, you know, seeing the fans. I miss the experiences. Uh, that's, that's about it. But I'm, you know, I'm confident. Hopefully if we all play nice, continue to play nice, they'll we right. can all be secure and, and do these things again. You know, I have one book that has not canceled in, in Nova Scotia in September. So we'll see, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited to get back to it. I, I know, uh, I, I don't think I have a stand-up show until like August. That's so. what Dusty said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. It's the same sort of thing though. It, once I, when I was on the road all the time, like 24 seven doing stand up, I couldn't wait to get home. But then as soon as I get home for like two days, I'm like, I'm right, ready to go back on the road. So it's really weird how you always want to do the other thing, right? Of course. Well, if you, if you don't mind me asking you, because I'm fascinated with stand up culture, what is, uh, and, I, and I should just watch your stuff. I'm sure there's, there's you doing your thing on the somewhere. But yeah, what is it's your- It's uh, all old. It's all so old <laughs> online. I, I, I need updated so badly. I just looked down and all I saw was someone wrote, Dusty is erect. Just Jason, Dusty, Jason, Grandma, and Goofy are erect. Well, that's fun. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, just ignore that guy. <laughs> no, more. We want to, you know. Uh, uh, what is your style? What, what, what are you a storyteller? Are you set up in punchline? What's your, what's your, your, your style? Uh, I mean, I think all, all jokes are set up in punchline. So, but but I think if you mean like just a one-liner kind of guy, no, I don't. I don't do that. Uh, I play guitar a little bit. I do some songs, okay. but I. So like the first half of my act is like just straight stand up, mm -hmm. and then the and then the second half I'll, I'll just play some original songs and stuff that I do. So. Now, what do you think about? Because I listen to you listen to Mark Marin. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've done shows with Mark. I love Mark. I love Mark Marin. I, I shared an ice cream sandwich with Mark at a, uh, at a uh, Steak and Shake in Indianapolis, and we, and we commiserated over how fat we are. <laughs> I saw him when he played Bonnaroo uh, at, the, at the comedy tent, and he was just, like, I knew him from, like, WTF, and he was just starting to get, like, popular enough where people were inviting him to these festivals, and, like, it, this was not his crowd, and he was, like, he was just sitting there, like, all right, what do you want? You know, I, clearly, this is not your speed. You know? <laughs> but I was, I loved it. I loved it. But he, he, he's he so good live. He's great. But he craps on on comedians with uh, who who do songs. What do you? And I know he's not the only one. What do you feel about about that? Yeah, I always thought that was a weird position to take, man. I, I've had. I don't want to name any names, but I had a comedian one time who was like, "Yeah, guitar players are hack," and I was like, "Yeah, I know regular comedians who are hack." So For I sure. don't know. What your point is? I mean, if if you hate guys who include music in their act, then you gotta gotta hate like Steve Martin, right? Right. It's like so. I, I just don't. I never understood that. I mean, to me, funny is funny. So whatever right, right. you could use to make somebody laugh, then like that's the thing. Exactly. I never considered myself a guitar comic though, because I do stand up for like mm -hmm. most of the act. Mm -hmm. I just play guitar at the end. Sure. So I always kind of considered myself more a comedian who plays guitar versus a guitar comic. But even still, I never understood that mentality. Like, I, there's, there's the purists out there, you know, sure. who, who kind of crap on that. I, I never got it. I, I, it was I, very, it's a, it's a strange perspective to me. I, 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 like you said, like, if it's funny, it's funny. I love it, right. whether it's... Don't get right. me wrong. I've seen some crappy guitar comics, but sure. I've seen crappy regular <laughs> comics, too. So... <laughs> How long did it take for you to find your voice? Do you know what I mean by, ask, by asking that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've always heard that like, like 10 years was like the sweet spot for a comedian right. to really find his voice. Yeah, that's what I've always heard. I, I, I also heard it uh, like, and I've been doing comedy now for 10 years, so specifically I should just now be hitting my stride. So I've been awesome. terrible for the last awesome. 10 years. So don't go look up any of my stuff is my point. <laughs> I started doing stand up a couple of years ago as uh, like a self challenge and to like get rid of bad habits because I feel and I'm not knocking my career like like uh, I'm very fortunate most of my stuff has been sitcoms and you you have and it works you have writers you have a team of writers who are writing the dialogue for you you rehearse it you have an audience that are conditioned to laugh at everything you say so mm -hmm. I'm always conditioned to go in for the, the laugh and so uh, I, I wanted to do stand up to learn to fail, to learn to fail with dignity. To well, you learn real fast. You learn very, very fast. You learn real and then, fast. Uh, yes, and and I'm doing it around here, and a lot of local comedians are ridiculous. They're so good, uh, but it's been so much fun. But I still haven't found my my voice yet. I write jokes. I I tell. I, I'm more of a storyteller, but all I do is open mics and. And it's usually like five minutes or four minutes, and that's like one joke for me. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that, and that's hard too. Being a storyteller, like if a crowd is not immediately into what you're, you know, what you're saying, yeah, it's like there's no, there's no getting out of it. You're like, yeah. well, I guess I'm gonna bomb for the next five minutes. Right, it's right. It's just the worst, man. I, can't, I, 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 I feel very bad for storytellers who get stuck in that rhythm. Sure, sure. Yeah, man. I don't want to keep any more of your time, and because we could keep talking stand up like all day long. But, but this is a comic book show. This is a comic book show. Yes. So we got to. We got to get away Sorry. from that, but um, make sure you guys go follow Jason here, uh, not James. And uh, we got follow James person, too. Man. He needs he needs the he yeah, needs the yeah, attention. Yeah. James needs some help. He's not been in everything I've ever seen before. Uh, but yeah, let's link up sometime, man. When all this is over, like like send me a message and let me know when you're going to do a stand up show. I'd love to come out and check it out. I would love that. Same. Okay, man. Thank Thanks you for so having much. me. Thank you, everybody, for watching.